Hi, and welcome. In this segment, we're going to discuss the uh, fire station project as a whole. We're going to discuss the location, the site plan, and the actual layout of the building. So in this slide, we have the current fire station at 11 Pear Street, and then a representation of where the proposed fire station was built at 61 to 65 West Main Street and 10 Monroe. Uh, as you can see, the proximity is pretty close. By picking this site, uh, the fire department is able to maintain its response time requirements per the National Fire Prevention Association, or NFPA. It allows for a much easier exit to respond on West Main Street. Also, in the current station, the new station will allow us to avoid uh, having to deal with the intersection of Church Street, Pier Street, and Main Street, and this island. Right now, the fire apparatus have to come out and deal with this intersection, which is not ideal. So talking about traffic, uh, we've talked about in other segments about preemption traffic systems, which help the apparatus respond uh, quicker and more efficient and safer. So here in this section where I'm pointing, that'll be approximately where the apparatus bay is, or the garage where the fire trucks are. This light right here will be a stationary light that will either be green or flash yellow at all times until the fire trucks need to leave in an emergency, at which point the ones facing east and west will turn red. And once those turn red, these will turn green. And that will tell the fire apparatus they can exit safely. When these turn red, there'll be two stop signs here. And that's where traffic will stop. This will allow the apparatus to come out and turn in a clear area. Anything that's, any vehicles that are in this area will be able to clear out and then these stop vehicles from entering. So it gives it a clear and safe area to get out. Down on the west side, uh, we're looking to add in a proximity sign that in addition to saying fire station ahead will blink when the preemption system activates. Just give a little more fair warning, but we're still researching that. Should the apparatus go east and head towards downtown, the intersection of Church Street currently has a preemption system, as does the intersection at South Street. So if the apparatus leave this area, this light will activate, allowing vehicles to clear the intersection. And then as they turn, this light will activate, allowing that intersection to clear. So as you can see, basically vehicles will stop and any vehicles here will be able to move forward on a green light, allowing the fire apparatus to follow. This here is just a quick zoom in picture of the approximate um, lot lines for the new station area. Again, right here and up in this area is approximately where the uh, apparatus will be. We purposely picked that because it's across from where the additional lanes are and it's not across from Dunkin Donuts so we don't have to worry about any of the traffic concerns with that. Okay, so let's talk the site plan. This is the current site plan. It is the version from July. It may tweak a little bit as we move forward in the project, but not much. Basically, this is the design that we're going to go with. The only tweaks that we may have up here is one driveway entrance and another driveway entrance. Because West Main Street is a state road, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation or MassDOT will have the final say on where the actual cuts are in the curb of where these driveways will be. But they won't be any dramatically different than what you see here. Starting at the front door, this will be the front door right here. We move around, this is the uh, apron and the fire apparatus garage or the apparatus bay. This is sized out so that the apparatus can pull out and park without having to interrupt Route 20 and enough so that if the apparatus returns, they can come in, make a turn, and back into the garage again without interrupting Route 20. Over here, this long driveway here, this is for the firefighters, so this is business. We purposely made uh, th this driveway separate than the public driveway. 
uh, back here is the, where the firefighters will park so it's a secure area for their vehicles but it also one of the designs had them parked over here um, which would have had the vehicles visible from downtown so this gives a little bit more aesthetics in addition to the security uh, back here is a small apron again there'd be doors on this side and doors on this side so our secondary uh, apparatus not our primary can exit here and go out and respond without having to interrupt with the public parking uh, we have a small little uh, cross-section road here this is just a secondary emergency egress that if something happens with this driveway at least the fire apparatus can get out uh, we'll have our dumpsters a full generator and then over here is our public parking and this public parking is primarily for uh, department business and when use of the multi-purpose room which is right in this section as you can see these cross lines these are islands that are recessed uh, they have like the um, those little rumble strips in them that's designed to make it much easier for the town to plow this area in the back area this gray line that is the retaining walls that have been discussed and we will go over more of that in another video in detail and then the exit out here and where this is placed currently is directly across from the exit of Dunkin Donuts to kind of create a four-way intersection so that drivers can communicate with each other visually to make left and right turns safely all right so now we're just going to take a quick quick walk around the outside these are schematic design pictures and so schematic design is the really the first evolution in the design so details haven't been determined so it's a rendering of, of based on basic information but it gives a good idea of what the station will look like it won't be dramatically different than this again it, it could tweak as we move forward this will be the front of the building looking from uh, West Main Street so down here this is West Main Street the main entrance um, the admin living area for the firefighters operations area uh, parking for the apparatus and our hose and training tower as we move around uh, going to the east side of the building so this would be looking from downtown uh, giving a representation of how the station is and as you can see here's this driveway cleared out um, you know and there'll be uh, this vision doesn't have vegetation but there'll be some bushes and trees and such that will be added uh, this here is the south facing or the back of the station and to be fiscally responsible the fire station building committee purposely didn't do much detail on the back here more detail equals more cost and this area is not going to be visible by the public and it's also the side that has a retaining wall so it'll be very um, it, it won't be much visible by anybody so they figured why spend the money so it's a very simple design back here but here we have the back doors um, some outside areas for the firefighters uh, as we move around to the other side this will be looking from the Shrewsbury side of the building uh, again the um, training room some parking upstairs and then if you see up here just to, to mention it um, by the billing code up here we have um, a design that keeps the snow on the roof from dropping down in, in big chunks it breaks the snow up for safety for the people below um, but with that the walkway comes out in a safe area and then anytime they have to transition people have to transition into the building here is a little recessed area it was a recommendation by another committee to uh, have a little recessed area so that somebody can come into here this is designed to protect them but it, it was a good idea just to make one more little tweak to make it even safer and this here is a design level drawing um, it's more of a picture and again because we've had more decisions made and more details the architects now can put in more data and come out with a more detailed uh, representation and more of these pictures will be created as we move forward uh, but basically this is that same looking at the front of the building and now has some trees and vegetation um, it shows you know a size representation of vehicles versus the building some cars parked so very nice design we're very happy with it um, and the difference between the schematic design where it's just there versus putting it in a session a setting um, really 
gives you an idea of how beautiful the building is and how it will be broken up from a visual standpoint. So before we go into the inside, just to give a quick, and this has been discussed in other videos, but um, the idea of the design of the station. So it's a national trend to create what are clean stations and healthy stations. Uh, firefighters are very susceptible to cancer and other hazards, but also very susceptible to mental illness and suicide is very high in, in the fire service. So with this building from the hazard side, we'll have a hut zone, which is this area. And this is the most contaminated. Uh, this is where the vehicles are, the exhaust, when they come back from fires and they're very dirty, the mechanic area. So you're very dirty area. In here is what's called the transition zone or the warm zone where they come in contaminated but they do a lot of cleaning off. You know, there's a gear area to part, there's a laundry room that they can clean their gear, a decon room to clean off, and some showers. There's a, uh, a drive in the fire service, it's called shower within an hour, which means within an hour of getting back to the fire station, you should be showered and completely clean and in normal clothes. So that gives the opportunity to do this without having to go upstairs and contaminate that area. Um, so basically we have this, and then to transition into this blue section, which is the cold zone, the administration and living in the public area, which is completely clean. By the time the firefighters get from this section to this section to this section, they're clean. And there's no cross contamination going in this direction. For a note, also the whole second floor is a cold zone. All right, so let's take a walk around the first floor. This is the current design. Again, like anything in this presentation, it could be some tweaks, but for the most part, this is the 90% of what will be the station design. And there was many hours, many, many hours put into figuring the details of this layout, uh, what the fire department looks like now, what the fire department looks like in the future. Uh, the committee met with and toured many other fire stations in the area to see you know, how they laid out, what worked for them, what they really liked that they did, items that they wish they had done different, items that they wish they had added, and also items they added that they really didn't need. So we took a lot of that information and we also looked into national trends. So as we go through, uh, we have some outside exit doors, but starting out in this area, we have a mechanics room. This is, uh, we have a mechanic on the fire department who's also a chef firefighter. Uh, this is where all their tools would be or if we work on some small engine equipment, and this area will be allowed for them to work on vehicles. This is the SCBA room, which is self-contained breathing apparatus. These are the air tanks that we live, wear on our backs. Um, and we need to, you know, we need to work on those. We need to fill them. We need to store them. So that'll be all in this room here. And in the next room is air compressor. So there'll be two air compressors in here. One will be the air compressor for the SCBA fill station. The other will be for air in the fire station apparatus bay, um, which all our vehicles are plugged into air, so it maintains their brake air system so that when we start the vehicle, we can immediately exit and respond quickly rather than trying to get the air to increase. Uh, we have a bulk storage area. We have our plumbing uh, mechanical and an outside storage area. These would be things such as, you know, uh, lawnmower, or a snow blower, some things that you know we'll use mostly outside don't need to come inside this whole section here is our apparatus bay so these are the doors on the front of the building these are the doors on the back of the building and we have it laid out in our vehicles that we currently have now it looks a little busy and full but it's really not we have ways to tweak this to expand for additional apparatus or different size apparatus as we move forward but right now, it's, it's a good design that, that will meet our needs now. It may seem uh, big when we first move in, but again, we wanted that space to move forward. Uh, moving into what was the operations area. So let's start back here. Uh, this is a bulk storage. And you'll see storage is a common trait. Uh, that is probably the most common thing that every fire station project we toured said, I did not put enough storage. So we made sure that we put in storage without increasing the, you know, majorly increasing the floor plan. Uh, an electrical room, here is that whole um, decon area. So a really dirty firefighter can come in, 
really get a, a, a heavy shower in this area, clean their gear and have a good shower and be out into a clean area. This is where they would store all their firefighter gear rather than on the apparatus floor as we currently have. Uh, in here we have, uh, it says medic, um, it says meds in O2. So this is uh, medications and oxygen. So this is where all our ambulance supplies will be kept. Some of which has to be secured um, per laws because of uh, the type of medicines that we carry. This here is a fire pole, uh, the infamous fire pole in the fire service that will lead to the second floor. Uh, we have a radio tech in charging. So what that is a radio technician. We have a firefighter who works on all our radios, repairs, programs, uh, things along those lines. This will be an area for them to work on that. It'll also be the charging area. So with the trend to move towards batteries uh, in the nation, especially lithium ion batteries or rechargeable batteries, um, we have dedicated space that all batteries will be charging or majority of batteries will be charging in one room. Current technology and batteries, sometimes they can be a little dangerous as we've seen. And so we wanted to make an area that was dedicated to that and will be designed to address any kind of fire issues in that area. We have a dispatch area. This is a small room that our primary dispatch is at the police station, but should something happen at the police station that they have to leave, or we have such an incident that's so big that we need more dispatchers, this area is dedicated to be a plug and play. So a dispatcher can come in, plug in, and dispatch fire and police from this room. Across the hall, we have a reports room and a duty officer. So the important part here is, um, in the fire service, or at least in the Norfolk Fire Department, the firefighters aren't going to be on the second floor in their living space during business hours. You know, they're gonna work their normal shift of 8 a.m. to approximately 4 p.m. downstairs to work, whether they're on calls or not on calls. So we wanted to dedicate an area where they would have a place downstairs to, to work on reports, work on projects, uh, and things along those lines, and you know, some small, small training, and then a duty officer, so that we want to maintain that, that group dynamics, um, and you don't want in a building this big that it'll be easy for people to be in other areas and never communicate, and communication and bonding is extremely important in the fire service. Moving into the admin section, so this is where our admin, fire chief, and such will be. Uh, we have an electrical room, an elevator, um, staff toilets, some closets. Over here is a conference room for uh, all the admin to use, uh, the fire chief. So if business people come in and we have to deal, work with them or we do presentations and such, that, that'll be an area for that. We'll have the chief's office and the deputy's office. We dedicated a fire marshal's office, which is a, also a fire prevention officer. Very important position in the fire service. So we figured that might be a position that comes down the road sooner than anything else. Uh, when, who knows. But again, to be fiscally responsible, we didn't build out a bunch of offices. There are other areas that will expand. EMS director, training officer, you know, other specialty areas. So what we did is we created the shares office. So it's one space, has multiple workstations in, we can expand it as we need be or keep it small. So it gives us an area of growth without spending a lot of money on increasing the, the square footage of the building. Uh, in the middle here, we have a small kitchenette, our server, our information technology, archive records that we need to access, printer, copy supplies, a coat closet. This is our administrative assistant or administrative professional. Um, this we did is a nice open area for them so that they're not in a in an office, but also the public can converse with them. The firefighters can come and converse with them. And then here we have a service window so that when the public comes in, they can see across and then they can talk and the admin can be in a safe area. Out here in the lobby, we have the vestibule. So here, this door will be locked at night. This door will always be open, giving an area that if you need to come to the fire station, you can still get into a safe area. Over here, the Firefighters Association has an antique hand tub from the 1800s. This will be here in displayed, which is it's a really cool piece of equipment, and it really is smaller than anything that we have now. Uh, as we move through the corridor, there will be a public, some toilets, 
And then this is the EOC, Emergency Operations Center, and the training room, which also a meeting room. So this will be where big trainings are. If we have to have a, a disaster in town, all department government operations will be through here. Uh, but also it will be open to uh, other municipal boards and committees in town that if they need to have meeting meetings, it gives us just another space in town to have a meeting space. So that is the first floor. And again, it has gone through many, many different versions as we've gone through the process that this really is um, meets the needs of the department currently and in the future. So I purposely skipped this area. We'll go over to here. This is the training tower and the host tower. So let's talk about that. So there has been questions as we've gone through the process of why do you need a host tower? Why do you need a tower? Why do you need a training tower? Um, so, and, and those have been discussed in some of the other videos and, and meetings that I've had, but just as a summary, the tower meets many purposes. One, it is an egress for the second floor. Um, it allows, it's required per the bailing code because of the space, but also it allows the firefighters to come down onto the apparatus floor without having to go through the administrating area. It, it gives roof access, so main roof access rather than having a hatch or having to use a ladder. It allows for training on stairs and you can also use uh, water training in here with hoses because it will be designed to have water float in it. Firefighters can move the hoses up and down, they can rescue people up and down so they can use that. And also it will be an area for drying hose or thawing hose in the winter, drying rope, uh, a whole bunch of things that, that you know we can use to dry and, and hang so it really meets a lot of purposes and maximizes the use of it all right so now as we go up these stairs to the second floor oh let's go into the second floor here we are all right so on the second floor this is where we came out so we came out the tower and we'll just start here so we have some storage this is the pole area and as you can see the pole by for health and safety reasons is in a room so that there's no cross contamination. Uh, we electrical, mechanical room, and as we've discussed with the energy code, um, there's a lot of requirements that for solar and energy that the mechanical room is, is very large. We have a laundry area, so that's where the firefighters can wash their uniforms. You know, we advocate that they don't take them home. You don't want to take the dirty clothes back to your family and wash it in your regular. Uh, regular washers, so there's a laundry room. We have some storage. Here we have a mix of uh, toilet only and shower toilets. Um, we could have done all shower and toilets, but uh, again, being fiscally responsible, really didn't need six showers, so we mixed it up a little bit. In this whole area, this is the sleeping area for the firefighters, the dormitories. Uh, currently, the way that it's designed is um, all of these rooms our double occupancy to allow for growth. Again, being on that fiscally responsible mindset, we could have done 14 dorms, but would have increased the floor plan quite a bit. So we did seven. And the reason we did seven is right now we have five firefighters per shift, um, hoping through a grant to expand to seven, which would give single occupancy for each dorm. If we had to expand staff in the future, it allows for growth. It also allows that during storms, if we need to bring more firefighters in to cover the station, they'll also have an area to sleep. This was kind of a neat concept that we found from another department where all the lockers for their uniforms and the personal items are outside of the actual sleeping area. And this could be for if a firefighter comes in during the middle of the night to get their stuff or they come in early to shift, they can get to their items without interrupting the firefighter that's inside the bedroom so it works out very nice over here is the captain's area this is a little bigger because the captain will have a desk in it as we go around this is study quiet room so this is um, initiative through national initiatives for health and safety um, for mental health um, this will be an area where if a firefighter just needs to get away and sit quietly it's a busy building they can go in there and just kind of hang out there'll be some chairs and library but they can also use it for studying a lot of the firefighters go to college classes or paramedic classes and 
there's a lot of studying and they study while they're on shift and that'll give them an area for that. Uh, as we move through, there's some stairs here that goes down into the lobby. Uh, we have our kitchen and day room. So this is where the, you know, it's like your living room and home with firefighters can relax at night. Uh, kitchen table and the kitchen. Outside here is an outdoor terrace. This is above the first floor. So it's not a, it's not an overhang. It's, it, if it wasn't there, it would be a roof. Um, this allows the firefighters to get outside, get some air, get some nature, get some on that mental health uh, initiative. Also, they can have a grill on a table out here. Uh, and again, if you look here, these are windows. So it's, and these are windows. So it provides the light to go through the building. Again, that helps with mental health because of natural light and things along those lines, but it also helps on energy wise because you're getting more natural light and you don't need to have your lights on or as high in the building. Um, BDA, just for clarification, that's bi-directional antenna. It, it's a fire code where radios have to work in a building. We have our elevator, electrical room, elevator machine room. Um, in here is the fitness room, the gymnasium. Again, lots of windows here, windows here, and windows here, and windows here. So very bright area. This kind of window is neat because you look over the fire apparatus, which kind of reminds you of why you're working out. Out here, there's another roof terrace. Again, this would be um, above the first floor. This allows firefighters to go outside and work out in the open air, doing jump ropes, push-ups, stretching, you know, where they can just be in natural environment. All right, so um, that is the living area, second floor. And then moving this way just to close it out, this is the apparatus floor, which would be open all the way to the roof. And then over here, we have a mezzanine. This is above where the mechanics room was in that SCBA room. This would be open uh, with a gate to the apparatus floor with some gate openings. This allows for more storage. Uh, our backup fire gear storage that we don't use very often, but we need access to. And also an area for training, for firefighter training, that'll be different than the ones for the training tower. So this would be some long-term, long-distance searching, um, some tech rescue um, training, but also it allows us to do indoor training, which is important during the winter when it's extremely cold or snowing, where it's icy, maybe dangerous outside to train. And equally, as New England has become, uh, during the summertime when it's extremely hot, because um, training firefighters on shift still have to work their shift for 24 hours. So we don't want them to be too exhausted from the, the heat and strenuous. So it allows us a lot of opportunities to do different things that are kind of important to the fire service. So that was the design of the fire station. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, here is uh, where you can get more information. So updated information on the fire service, fire station, the status of the fire station, um, updated imaging floor plan so you can follow on this. So thank you for listening.